Hello everyone, this is Logan again, uh, bringing you part two of my electric motor series. And I wanted to show you how I actually started learning about this. I mean, I'm sure some of you have a, uh, electrical engineering degrees or, or whatnot where you actually understand all the math, you learned about it. Uh, however, actually finding that, if you're, if you're interested in electric motors, uh, learning about it yourself and discovering everything you need is actually quite difficult to do there I mean there is a few YouTube videos that'll talk about it uh, but a lot of times they don't dive into the real specifics of how it all works and just trying to to read through academic papers and on the subject is, is very difficult so I wanted to bring you the very first electric motor uh, that this really taught me how they work. And this is extremely simple. I got this off of a website called simplemotors.com. I'm going to put the link in the description. This is fantastic. If you're thinking about getting into electric motors, you want to learn how they work, buy this. I don't remember the exact cost off the top of my head, but it is fantastic. It is absolutely worth the money. So the way this works here is that it has a coil, basically a solenoid. Uh, it has a metal uh, bolt or, or metal pin in here, surrounded by many, many turns of, I, I believe this is 30 gauge wire, no, maybe 26 gauge wire, I'm not sure, uh, somewhere in there. And it's wrapped around and that creates an electric field when current is running through it. Uh, how, and so of course it has magnets right here. Now if you were to just turn this on, it would suck the magnet towards it and it would stick there, it wouldn't move at all. So what has to happen is once this gets some momentum to turn, it has to turn it on, it has to be turned on the coil, pushing this away, and then when the next one comes around, it has to turn off until it gets to the exact right spot, then turn on and push it away again and keep doing that. The way you detect that, at least in this type of motor, is what's called a Hall effect sensor, right here. It's actually coming out of place here a little bit. But basically it's got a little sensor in there that detects a magnetic field. The one thing this doesn't really tell you, this kit doesn't help you with, is the exact placement. Uh, it gives you the instructions on their website, but it doesn't get, help you with the exact placement. So you do have to play around with it, because you can get better or worse effects depending upon where this the sensor is uh, re relative to where the magnet and the coil is. Uh, but basically, when this senses a current, it sends, or I'm sorry, when it senses a magnetic field, it sends a signal out to the this Darlington transistor. That transistor then turns on and allows current to flow through the coil. When it no longer detects a magnetic field, it turns off, turning off the Darlington transistor, and therefore you no longer get current in the coil. It's a really simple design, but getting this to the exact right position is kind of difficult. Now a couple things to note here that they don't necessarily tell you, but you want this, and the, they do send all, everything here except for the batteries themselves and this wire here. They send all of this in the kit, so you have it all. Uh, but they don't necessarily tell you how, how it all works, just how to set it up with the instructions. Um, You'll see more of this as I start taking apart this and showing you how it all works, but basically you want this to be the size of the magnet. So either the coil itself or the head of the pin to be approximately the size of whatever magnet you have, size and shape. Because you're going to get the most effect right around the outsides of the coil. That's where the field is the strongest. And that's where the field is strongest around the, the magnet as well. So you want that uh, to be about the same size so they line up. Uh, now, in a normal motor like this, you're going to have the poles or the magnets alternating. So you're going to have north-south, north-south, facing inward all the way around. So you have to have an even number of magnets. In this particular one, because they're spaced so far apart and there's only one coil, only one phase, uh, it's actually okay to have them all facing the same direction. Although, it was difficult to get them on there. I glued them on there, uh, and that should be enough to hold them, but the reason I taped over this is I realized that when I get to four batteries or more, it ends up getting so powerful, it spins so fast, you know, three, four, five thousand RPMs, 
I've had it up to, that I don't necessarily want to risk those things coming off. Um, but here we go, I'm going to hook it up so you can see it already likes to stick to it there. Once I spin it, there we go. Once I get it going there, it starts going quite fast and I'm going to have the sensor there. We're already up to over 2,000 RPMs. I'm sure you can hear that, it's nice and quiet. Now one thing to note, and in this particular thing with three batteries, it's not that big a deal. It's only about four and a half volts. But these transistors can get quite hot. Uh, I don't know what this particular one is capable of handling off the top of my head. Yeah, there is writing on there to show you what kind of a, a transistor it is. It's, it says TIP107. You could probably look that up and see exactly what it's, it's capable of handling. I would guess maybe one or two amps. So if, if you're expecting to use even close to the, the maximum, you don't want to glue this down here. You want it on some sort of heat sink like what I've made for this. Uh, but um, However, this does work quite well. Super simple, it'll teach you everything. In fact, when I'm wiring all this up, more, all the more complicated things up, I still keep this diagram handy. Uh, it's extremely useful. Uh, I know there are a lot of motors out there that actually use MOSFETs instead of transistors. One thing I've not found yet is actually a resource to tell you how to connect a MOSFET versus a, a transistor. Also, if you are buying your own, make sure you get the right kind because there's both uh, PNP transistors and NPN transistors. And that actually refers to the order of the layers of the transistor material. I'll dive into that more later, but uh, I believe this is a PNP transistor, as are these, uh, simply because I'm used to using that. If anyone's watching this and they know how to connect a setup like this to a set of MOSFETs, uh, I would really like to see that. Please send me a, a, a link because uh, I've heard that those are actually a lot more power efficient and run much more, uh, much cooler, so you don't need as much uh, cooling power, as much uh, of a heat sink on something like that. But this is a fantastic starting kit. If you are at all interested in electric motors, even if you don't plan on building anything like that, I recommend you buy it. It's, it's not very expensive at all. Again, I don't remember the, the cost off the top of my head. It's like 30 bucks or something. Uh, it's absolutely worth it. Uh, just to play around and experiment, I believe this will go down to even just two double A's. Uh, I've had it up to all four. I also at one point used this. Here I bought this myself, so I had six. And I think at one point I even had... Um, 12 volts. I was using this power supply here, and I think I even might have had it up to 12 volts or, or maybe even a little more. Uh, not using this transistor, but a different one. So, thanks for checking out my video, and uh, be sure to subscribe because I will have more videos explaining the way these things work uh, as I go forward. So, like if you like it, uh, let me know what I could improve on or what else you'd like to see, and of course, have a great day.